Hi, I'm Lawrence from The Things Industries. And in this video, I'm going to explain you how to create an application and how to add a LoRaWAN and device using over-the-air activation. So what do you need for this? So you need an account on the Things stack or the Things Enterprise stack. You need to have a gateway connected to this LoRaWAN network server and you need a, a LoRaWAN and device. So for this tutorial, I'm going to use the uh, TAPS device, so it is a sensor with an infrared uh, sensor, so it can detect movement. And in that way, it can be used to, for example, um, sense the occupancy of a meeting room. So how to start? Let's go to your, uh, your console of the Things stack or the Things Enterprise stack. And we start with adding an application. And we start by adding a new application. So you have to specify an ID or an identifier. So let's call this the demo tabs application. You can give it an additional name or description, uh, but that's all optional. So let's skip this for now. So we started with the application. Now we're going to add the end device. So we use over the air activation. Uh, and it's important to know the LoRaWAN version. So this version is implemented uh, by the device manufacturer. So you can most often you can um, find this in the data sheet or in the um, specifications of the device. So for this specific um, LoRaWAN device, we have the v version 102 that's implemented. Um, and you can leave the rest of these settings as default. Um, next, we have to give it a nice name, so let's call it a TAPS device. Um, continuing with the UI, so all of this information should be provided by the device manufacturer. Um, so this is actually the device UI. Um, we copy the app UI, or sometimes also referred to as the joint UI in later lower one versions. And then we, um, you again, like you can give it a name and description, but that's again optional. You choose the frequency plan. So I'm based in Europe in Amsterdam. So I go for the recommended European frequency plan and then select the corresponding regional parameters version. This can also be applied or also be found in the data sheet of the device or provided by the device manufacturer or reseller. So this should always correspond with the lower one version. So I'm choosing the lower one version of my device is 102. And then my regional parameter version is either, either 102 revision A or revision B, revision B. So it's revision B in my case. So then we continue to the join settings. And I'm adding the end device. So now we're all set. So all the settings are pre-filled. Uh, there are some advanced settings that you can fill in. It is not needed for now. So you can do this. That's, for example, needed if you have a third-party joint server uh, or if you want to set up roaming with third-party lower one network servers. But as of now, that's not needed. So um, we have everything set up. So the only thing that we have to do now is connect the end device and wait for the device to start sending a join request message. So it might take some minutes uh, for this specific device, but I just connected the battery so it should start sending a message shortly. And here we see that the message starts sending data and you can see that in the events section. So we can get more information in the data tab and here we can see that it, the device receives a, or the network receives a join request um, and eventually a join accept is sent from the network server, uh, pushed to the gateway, which sends it to the end device. So if all goes well, the device joined the network and then we will shortly see the first real payload to be arrived. So while we wait for this payload, 
for this initial data message to arrive, we can already set up the payload form on it. And the payload form mother is a way how to translate the binary data format, which is sent by the device to a more human readable um, format. So we go back to the application view. Um, we select um, payload form mother as an uplink. And in this case, I'm gonna select the JavaScript um, form other field and already copied uh, the payload form other. So you could write this yourself or most of the times this is also provided by the device manufacturer. So I'm going to save the settings and then we are going back to the data tab. So we just see that the network server received a first um, uplink message. Um, so you can open up this event to find all the information. So it include, includes the, the payload, the decoded payload as a result of the payload form model we just um, filled in. And you see all sorts of meta data. There was all the information and all the few steps that is needed to create an application and to add a LoRaWAN N device. Um, thanks a lot for watching.